Hansel. Sweezy. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! So, Hulu made a documentary on Hillsong called The Secrets of Hillsong. First of all, I want to talk about, before I get into anything this documentary is about, let's talk about the logo that they made for the series. What the fuck is this? Who who said this was okay? I hate fucking designs like this. Designs like this just annoy the shit out of me. Because it looks like... Because it looks... Because I'm like trying to figure out how in the hell I'm supposed to fucking read this shit. And it's like, is it the secrets of Hillsong? Or is it Hill the secret of song? That, it looks like it's Hill the secret of song. That's what it looks like I'm fucking watching right now. That looks like what I'm going to about to get myself into is the hill, the secret of song. So, yeah. Come on, Mark. Don't be stingy. You know, what the fuck we're watching. So that, that, that annoyed me. That was a big problem going that, that took a little bit of time to get over, but I was watching. Yeah. But discovery plus released a documentary last year on Hillsong, and a lot of this covered, I think even one part in this documentary, they showed footage from that documentary. It's like, what the hell are we doing now? I do know, like, Dis Discovery, you know, before they were, like, with Warner Brothers, they used to make documentaries that were kind of similar to what another company was making. Somehow they got to it first, but, but this one also had more updated stuff added to it as well, like stuff that's happened in the past year after that documentary came out. So, uh, this was good. I, this was a lot better than it, than that other documentary, but I guess, yeah, this one was way better. It was on Hulu produced. Uh, I was, it aired on FX and it was produced by Vanity Fair. Vanity Fair usually, uh, I don't know if y'all, if, if it's fake news or not, but they usually put some quality into their work. And so, uh, Cool stuff, slick stuff, neat stuff. So uh, yeah, I don't. I already knew a lot of this stuff, but uh, I'm here to say that we, we learned a lot more. Uh, so this is a four part series um, uh, about Hillsong. They go over, you know, their start, uh, their rise to glory, uh, and then controversy. Which I've, I've, you know, I've been in church. I, I was probably in church around. 23, 24 years of my life, and I gotta tell you, there's always fucking controversy, drama. It's oh, it always, it's always in church. Like, church should be the last place to have controversy, uh, because you're supposed to be, in your eyes, you're supposed to be the good, good guys, and yeah, big, you know, and it's different from like, you know, churches is like, yeah, I, you know. I saw I saw a 24 year old girl with a nice little tight body, and it made me want to have sex with her. It's nothing like that <laughs> that the Christians get bad. It's stuff like, yeah, I cheated on my wife, and when I broke up with this girl, I said, "You have nothing," you know, and I bankrupt people and I ruin their careers and stuff like that. So we yeah, ever talk about that? But the big thing that this documentary has that the other documentary does not have is. Actual interviews from Carl Lentz. Carl Lentz, who you may know, uh, had a dick V. You know, he worked out, he looked good, and he had a dick V. And TikTok decided to block that video that I posted talking about it. And I gotta say, TikTok, you literally let people post videos of prolapsed anuses. I've seen multiple prolapsed anuses, and I'm going to tell you, I don't think kids should see that shit, but you allow that shit from Howie Mandel. However, though, I post a picture and talk about Carl Lentz's dick V, and at the end of the day, that's a positive thing. Dude, dude looks good, and I was saying positive things. Just I've never seen, I was like, I never saw a pastor with a dick V before, and TikTok's like, we can't have you be fucking spreading this nonsense. Oh, prolapse anus, go ahead. Sh sh fuck you, TikTok. But also, thank you for entertaining me. So they got interviews from Mr. Dick V himself, Carl Lentz, and his wife, Laura. And uh, I will talk about them in a little bit. Uh, but first, let me go back into 
Uh, let me give you a little background on, try to give a good background on anything, a summarized background of what is going on in what, what has been going on with the Hillsong, why they're so controversial, and why they're pure fucking evil to the church. So, so I guess uh, this, this documentary really gets into Brian Houston, and basically what happens, I guess his dad was a pastor at a church, and then he, Brian Houston, took over, and then he was really focused on the music, and I guess they came up with the name Hillsong, and then Hillsong, the music, you know, all the music group and, you know, whatever they have there, they all, uh, they just decided to name the church after that because it got so popular. It's just the Hillsong Church. That's basically where it was. I remember the Kansas City one of that, and I had a lot of friends who went to. Uh, people don't really talk too much these days. Um, that's for sure, and I don't know if they still go there. Uh, they're not the best examples of Christians in the world. Just well, you know, most of the terrible people I terrible people I know really into church. So, and they're like, I want my kid going to a private Christian school. I'm like, yeah, that's cool. That's cool little brainwashing there. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, they talk a lot about Brian Houston. So yeah, they became big from that. Uh, and it made Brian Houston probably one of the biggest pastors in the world. I would say probably the biggest pastor in the world. I, I mean. Hillsong is huge. Like I thought, I always thought Hillsong. Hillsong was always huge. Like if you look at Christian radio or whatever. It was like it's always them, and they always do live albums because live albums are really cheap to make. Like <laughs> live albums, really. Besides, unless you do, a, it depends on how much you do after it was recorded. But theoretically, a live album is just you record a band playing live and then you release that. Where like a studio version is, you're possibly working hard just to get really good takes and everything like that and make everything like polished and perfect we're live you don't really have to do that you just play and things go from there sometimes you come back a lot of people come back in and overdub shit but i don't know what they're doing um so yeah and the big thing is then good brian houston created hill song then carl lentz came along carl lentz was just like really cool guy dresses really cool and basically what is the millennial celebrity pastor? Like, he baptized Justin Bieber. He knows a lot of other celebrities, so he is, like, the celebrity pastor. And so, like, that. What happened was, we talk about in the other documentary, and they talk about in this one, where Carl Lentz was caught cheating on his wife and having an affair. The, even, the, other, the other documentary interviewed the girl he cheated on, and she was like, yeah, he was like, when they broke up, was like, you have nothing, but I still have my family. I'm like, what? That's kind of shitty. He was kind of shitty there. Talked about how, like, his old church before he was, before he became, like, a mega pastor or whatever, uh, he basically was very, really terrible to people who admitted, like, a couple who admitted they had sex before marriage. Ooh. Man proposes and God disposes. You know, <laughs> speaking of God. And so, yeah, and then basically what happened was, you know, Carl, Carl did some shitty things and he got fired from his job for doing a shitty thing. And really, continuing on here, it really shows from there how shitty megachurches are because they only, they're only they really just a way for people to make money. It's like a great way for someone to make money. I know typically I wouldn't say going into being a pastor for money, but if you get a job at a megachurch, especially if you get a job, and I will say this because Nashville is where uh, the Christian music industry exists, so if like you're if you get if you can be like a worship pastor or even a head pastor at like a big church in Nashville, you're fucking set. You're making uh, you're making uh, six figures at least. You're at least making six figures as a as a pastor. Which like I always think that I always assume that if you go into ministry, you're not doing it for the money. You basically take a paycheck just so like you can survive usually and these people do it to become rich and because they're narcissists a lot of pastors are narcissists which leads me into you know the big big interviews with carl and laura because i was like yeah carl is just probably a narcissist you know uh you know and i know i'm watching watching it through the tv and everything's edited and everything from there but Carl seems like he's trying to do better, you know? I still believe he's he believes in the Christian thing, which that's that's for another time. But he really is but he really is trying to he does seem like he's trying to do better. Uh he tried he just decided to stop doing being a whole like a celebrity or whatever. He works a job in like advertising. They showed that in the job. 
The thing with his job in advertising is he still dresses the same for the most part. Probably the price tag is a lot lower on uh, on his clothing. Like the probably the price of his clothing has gone down. I would say, but overall he still kind of dresses the same. And you know, I'm gonna be honest with a lot of you, you don't have to spend a lot of money to dress good. Like it does not take. People are like, I have to wear a Versace and stuff like that. I'm like, no. Even actual rich people don't dress like that. They dress nice, but they, you know, you can dress well pretty without spending a ton of money. Uh, that, I think that's just really true, and I think Carl still dresses nice, but he, he just stands out because he looks like a he looks like a, a hip pastor <laughs> still, uh, still like running around and stuff like that. But him and Laura are still together, and they still have their kids together, which is which is I always think is interesting to hear. You know, I'm not married or divorced or anything like that, but like when you know when like an affair happens in in a marriage and the couple decides to work through and I'm like and get stay together I'm like it's very interesting uh I think that really that really does show that really does show like I don't know if it's love maybe like a good partnership or whatever I don't know what do you guys think about that um and like she had every right to divorce him but like she didn't like work they're working it out you know they're probably still working working through it I mean it's just happened how it is and stuff like that so that's cool so is Carl Lentz a good person now um, on, in the public, he, he is trying to do better, but is he better? I don't know. I don't know the guy. So, sorry. Maybe it was, I mean, Justin Bieber likes him. I don't know if that changes anything, but I think he still likes him, you know? Um, here's the big T on the series though. And I think this is a really interesting thing. So the Hillsong Church, like Brian Houston and probably a ton of other people. And like, and yeah, they give examples of other people, like one guy, like, groped a woman, you know? Like, he was, like... But he was, like, in a position where, like, he got drunk and students weren't allowed to get... It was, like, the Hillsong School in Australia. Thought about going to that one, at one point. I knew a guy who went. And I don't know him anymore. I just knew a guy who went. And you know what? I'm glad I didn't, you know? I know those church jobs would have been nice, but, like, a, you know, a church worship pastor job. I don't know if I'd probably just shoot myself in the fucking brain having to be like, you are holy! And then, like, hearing, Jesus is the only one that can satisfy... And I'm like, have you have you tried jerking off? Even even a bad jerk off, you know, still comes out okay, you know, you know, like you're like save sex until marriage, save sex for like maybe someone you care about, and it's not wanting to be with you or be around you for sex, you know, that's a that's a good strategy, but like Brian Houston. He's been having scandal after scandal after scandal, and the church just covered it up. Which, you know, when you think about you, know, you think about that, you're like, yeah, probably he's the leader of the thing. They're probably gonna cover up shit like that. But however, when Carl Lentz went through his scandal, the church immediately fired him for like, was it moral uh for moral failures, I think is what they said. But Brian Houston has been doing this fucking shit forever. Like, he's at least, I don't know if it's assaulted or came on really weird, you know? Because I I never know with that because if, like, a guy hits on you or acts weird around you, that's one thing, and... But it's like, when you intentionally grope and the woman feels uncomfortable and shit like that, you know, there's a line, you know, and, you know, and I think he, he clearly, he probably crossed the line. I don't know how far he crossed the line. Uh and shit like that, but he's been doing that forever, and the church has been covering it up and, like, paying out people. It's crazy to think how Brian Houston handled Carl, probably because Carl was about, probably gonna start his own, probably do his own thing and break off from Hillsong, you know? And he's like, I gotta play in a church, we gotta reach everyone. And, you know, I think he, like, he intentionally wanted to be a New York pastor, so, like, he would stay in New York, and, you know, I don't know, I don't even know, and, like, he would have taking money away from Hillsong, so that's why, that's really why they fired him, but, you know, it's weird that just fucking Brian Houston is doing that same stuff. He also, he's also been doing a ton of other stuff. First of all, his dad, and this is also a controversial thing, so his dad, Frank Houston, uh, who was the past, who was like a pastor before, I don't know if it was the same church or not, but I think it was, you know, at least a branch of it, and that became, that Hillsong became, uh, their founder, Frank, he was a known pedal. He, and he always assaulted, it's always boys. Why is it always boys? You know, I was, you know, you think being, you know, think, do you think like that, the fact that like we're more open to being gay now will stop little boys from getting, it's not going to, but like, 
and well, I mean, I mean, I don't know. It's like the whole sexuality thing. I don't know. Yeah, I, I guess it'll probably still happen. But like people, like guys were like very scarred from the shit. Like they're out of Bible study at their house, a kid here asleep, and all of a sudden, fucking creepy old Frank just breathing on. He, he clearly breathes with his mouth. If you look at a picture of Frank Houston, he clearly breathes with his mouth, and uh, it's fucking disgusting. And yeah, you go in there and just fucking do gross shit. With, ugh. I don't know. Pedophilia just makes me feel gross. Does everyone feel that way? I hope that's a normal feeling to be like grossed out by pedophilia. Because I don't know, just like, ugh, it makes me feel like watching that fucking Jared Fogel documentary just makes you want to, ugh, it's just gross. I don't like feeling gross, you know? It's like, I don't know, like your shower. You know, like that feeling when you haven't taken a shower? Oh, let's go two days without a shower. It's like that, but like your brain. It's disgusting. But so basically, they're basically saying that Brian Houston has known about the, his sexual assaults uh, for for a long time now, and he's been n- knowingly covering it up. And, you know, and so he's, he's going to trial for it. And he said, they also said at the end of every episode, the reason why Brian, H- they said Brian Houston did not get interviewed because of mainly legal troubles, you know? And, you know, if clearly if you're, if you're like in court with something, like don't talk to anyone about it, about your shit. Just do whatever your lawyer tells you to do. And if you're like, I think it would be better if I did this. I think your lawyer, uh, hopefully if you hired a good lawyer, I think he probably knows better than, than you. So, so, uh, yeah. So knowingly coming up and I don't know, like if you find out your dad's a, like a pedophile, like what do you, what do you even do in that situation? It's like, you know, because your heart tells you, I'm like, that's my dad. I don't want my dad to go to jail. But your dad did some gross shit, you know? It's a, it's a very weird, like, morally you say, like, yeah, my dad deserves to go to jail because he did all this gross stuff, and he deserves that. But at the same time, you're like, but that's my dad, though. He never did that to me. And, like, that's one thing, too. It's like, he never did it to me. And, you know, like, the relationship you still have with your father is still there unless he's, like, doing shit to you. It's a very weird thing. But... The worst thing Brian Houston, the worst thing about Brian Houston of all of it is his voice. His voice is so fucking, ugh. It makes me cringe hearing his voice. It's like, low. he speaks, I don't, I think, I'm trying to figure out, I don't know exactly, but he, he clearly, there's clearly something going on with his voice because uh, there is something, like, if I'm speaking with more energy in my voice, you'll notice my voice decides uh, and that it'll go a little higher, and maybe it'll be like this, too. Like, maybe I'm talking like this, but if I'm kind of talking quietly or whatever, my voice usually goes lower because I'm not using my voice as much because it takes more effort to use my upper register than my lower register, as you're seeing an example here. So what Brian Houston is doing, he's basically doing some form, was it uh, vocal? Fr- he's doing some form of a vocal fry, and... Even even normally, vocal fry is kind of annoying me. It's hard to it's hard to listen to people talk with the vocal fry. Very Californian, I guess, Australian, New Zealand, whatever. But like, so he's speaking with a vocal fry, Australian accent, and his voice is already not that good. So it's, his just voice is just so bad to listen. I don't understand how anyone like how the hell he became a billionaire. And to be honest with you, preaching you're basically just doing a Bible TED talk at the end. And for Brian, it's like basically a fundraiser for him to be a billionaire. Like, that's basically what he did, did TED Talks for. And so how, like, he created a following himself to get so many people just to listen to him talk with how fucking awful his voice is. He needs a vocal coach. Like, and I'm, I'm kind of thinking at a point, like, his voice, to me, does not sound, like, that healthy. Maybe it's some vocal damage. I don't know. He does, I, he has been told he does, uh, what? He does have, uh, like, a bit of a temper, so I bet he probably could have damaged it from yelling, stuff like that. So, anyways, if anyone knows anything about Brian Houston's voice, please tell me, because I fucking hate it. I think his voice sounds gross. Like, sounds so bad, and it's bad. Uh, what else did Brian Houston do? Oh, yeah, he tried to hit on women, cheat on his wife, and, you know, and then obviously scandals with other people and cover-ups and stuff like that. But, yeah. So Brian Houston's a piece of shit, and uh, you can you can clearly tell. Like, I don't know if Carl Lentz is a narcissist, but a hundred percent, I I know a hundred percent. Brian Houston, he's a hundred percent a narcissist, 
and a terrible person. So if you're still, you know, checking out Hillsong and still enjoy their music or their pastors or their church or their, you know, whatever the fuck they do these days, because they have, like, gone downhill a lot. Like, you know, they're built on pedophilia. Uh, Oh, yeah, and let's not forget that uh, basically all their church funds went to, like, luxury shit that he was doing, you know, like, and they were keeping, like, receipts, like, oh, yeah, Brian needed this $300,000 watch, so we had to use the church money to get it. Like, that's how we ministers to people, like, you know, and uh, people would be like, you're just a hater. Like, well, let's let's talk about it. Didn't Jesus say it's easier for a camel, was it the camel to walk through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to get to heaven? Like, the Bible, like, is clear, just, like, it's so clear about, like, how Rich people, it's hard for someone who's rich to go to heaven, and I think we talked about this earlier in the episode. There is no ethical way to become a billionaire. There, if you, if you are a billionaire, you did a lot of unethical things, and like you, you know, and you hurt a lot of people on your way to get that billion dollars. And so, yeah, at the end of the day, uh, these people are just awful and annoying, and the worst human beings to ever exist. Thank you for watching this clip. 